See, when they win, all the bad things that happen to them during the game, it's funny. Like overcoming Wes McCauley. Extremely funny. Callie Rosen scoring, though. Callie actual Rosen. It's funny now. I laugh. Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What? Not nice! There's a giant hand! <laughs> you hear yourself! I made like 2,000 of these. I'd like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFO. Puppy Ziggy, now question, I'm not mad. Listen, when you broke my nose and you saw me bleeding all over the place, did you know something had happened or were you just like, oh, that's weird that that's spontaneous, I'm not done. Okay, well you can be a ref then. Through blood, sweat, and tears, the puck don't lie. Leafs win 5-4 in overtime over the St. Louis Blues in St. Louis. We did not hear a fifth ding! And the reason I emphasize in St. Louis is not because of my disdain for the arch, but I do hate the arch a lot. Have you ever been up the arch? Don't go up the arch. It's, it should be your last time going up the arch. It's terrifying. It's made of paper mache. Google it. Type in large paper mache tourist attraction. Anyway, last year, the Leafs had a 3-1 lead on the St. Louis Blues in St. Louis and blew it! Only to win the thing anyway. Hooray. That was on Saturday night and I remember it so vividly because it was on a stream. Nothing like an 11 goal stream! And this one, nine. Nice calm affair. Let's talk about it, but first, think you know which way it's gonna go? Like for example, you're like, oh yeah, former Leaf Josh Levo's gonna score. No! You were drinking coffee on Josh Levo and sleeping on Callie Rosen. All of ya. Me too. When he scored, I'm like, is that, is that Callie Rosen? I forgot he was on the blues. I didn't even say the thing. Make your bet at Sports Interaction. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game, live betting on all major sports, and prop bets. Wanna bet? Head to Sports Interaction dot com slash sdpn that's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn 19 plus please play responsibly leaf fans i think we simply file that game into a little folder that, that we keep under under all the other folders and this little folder is called hooray where you get two points and you simply say hooray what about this guy when he didn't nope they won Hooray! Ilya Samsonov is a little concerning. Nope, he's not. Hooray! You just tuck it in there and you sit on your two points and you be happy. It's like a cheap but practical gift for Christmas. It's like getting socks. You probably weren't thinking about socks. I doubt you asked anybody for socks, but when you get socks, you're like, yeah, you know what? I do go through a lot of these. Nope. Hooray. Hooray for socks. Hooray for two points. Hooray for a 5-4 win. Let's talk about it. Because the first goal off a rebound is Justin Hall. His second of the season, the Hall of Famer, and the Leafs are up 1-0. And you know what was funny? He doesn't score a lot. Like, he doesn't put up any points this guy. Not anymore. He went into this game with four points in 34 games. And he didn't get an assist in this one, so congrats on five points in 35 games. But despite all that, we haven't complained about Justin Hall for over a month because his pairing with Mark Giordano, like they're just working so well together. He's playing so well together. He looks poised. He's directing traffic out there. And after scoring that goal, he proceeded to play his worst game in at least a month. And with his second goal for four and a half minutes, Justin Hall tied Callie Rosen in goal scoring. You thought Justin Hall's goal was unlikely. This goal, this clap bomb from Callie Rosen came from Logan Brown and is it Alexi? Torupchenko? Yes it is. Rosen third goal, Brown second assist, and Torupchenko second assist. That goal shouldn't have happened. But it's still the first period we move. I didn't even have to look up this screenshot. As soon as John Tavares buried it, producer Drew texted me this. This is the magic of Mitch Marner and John Tavares playing on a line together. I don't know why we went so long without it. Oh wait, yeah I do. There's another guy on the team who scored 60 goals. But you know what? These two worked well and Tavares had 47 the first time. They lost. Eyes. I do want to give the Leafs as much offensive credit as possible. After all, they did get the win, but this is some real bad defense from St. Louis. And it's like both teams were trying to outdo each other. But at very least, on this one, the Leafs head into intermission up to one. And early in the second, this is where I thought the Leafs were going to completely run away with it. Blues are on the power play. That's not where I thought they were going to run away with it. I was rather concerned. And then I'm watching. And even though I'm watching, and I've been watching the whole time, I know what's going on. The Leafs are on the penalty kill. The Blues are on the power play. I'm like, do the Leafs have a three on one? And they did, but they like backed off because they're like well what if we don't score then it's one on four the other way and also none of us expected to be in this position that doesn't even happen in drills like like they didn't they, they, the 
that's never happened in practice. And if they did, it'd be like, remember that time we gave up a three on one doing the power play drill and Sheldon Keefe skated us into the earth's crust. The second funny thing about that goal, Timothy Lilligren, he puts it on. Stopped by Jordan Bennington, there's a rebound. And two Leafs in front of the net. The Blues haven't even, what is this? This is the worst line change in human history. Yarn Croak, or as I like to call him, Kelly Yarn Cart Ross, I will work on it, gets it to Kerfoot, and this, this is the moment, the moment I thought it was getting away from them. Look at this, look at this, Biddington gave up before Kerfoot touched it, look at this, he's not touching the puck, he gave up, his head is on the way back, like, aw, oh, nuts. Kerfoot, like, accidentally hits the puck into the, if, honestly, honestly, the wind from that puck wouldn't have blown out a birthday candle. But the Leafs are up 4-1, and Kerfoot gets his fifth of the season, Committing to his bit of only scoring hilarious goals. That is it. The body language is awful. The Blues defense stinks. The Leafs are running away with this. But then they give up a sort of odd man rush that's not actually an odd man rush. Like, look at this. They, they actually recover pretty well. Justin Hall, very responsible. He's back there. And he's back there. And he's back there. And he continues to be back there. And stop being so far back there! Ryan O'Reilly, with all the time and space and worst stick in the universe, snipes it on Sansonov because that's, that was essentially a, like a soccer free kick drill. I don't know what Justin Hall thinks is so scary on this side of the- I don't know. I don't know what he was preparing for, but the- way, way too much respect. So the Blues are within one curve foot, and there's another guy who's like, yep, everyone's complimenting me, let's throw that away. He takes a penalty, goes to the box. Justin Falk with a bomb from the point, and you know, you know, he's got a good shot. He's an NHL player, offensive defenseman, he's got a good shot. This needs to be stopped by an NHL goaltender every time. Every single time. Listen, I don't want to totally rip on Samsonov. He's been good for the Leafs this season. He's speed wobbling right now. He's struggling. If you want to take any good news from Samsonov's recent struggles, it's that the Leafs had not won a game where he allowed more than two goals. And now they've won back-to-back -back games where he's allowed more than two goals. I'm sorry, he tracked that, he saw that, there's no traffic in front, it didn't deflect off anything. You, that, ha that has to be a save. That has to be- that's not even like a smart shot selection from Falk. It's like, he's taking that shot thinking, alright, he's gonna save it and then kick it out to the right. Hope for a rebound or something. It's, it's not even a clever shot! That can't go in. So now it's tied and Pontus Holmberg did something in this one. He looked at the score sheet and he said, Callie Rosen scored. Like Callie Rosen had an impact on this game. He saw Callie Rosen's name on the score sheet. The vast majority of fan bases in the league do not know who that person is. Leaf fans might remember Callie Rosen as one of the guys who the Leafs traded to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for Nazem Kadri, but what a lot of Leaf fans probably forgotten, I'm about to blow your mind, is the Leafs got Rosen back from the Avalanche. Who did they trade for him? Can any of you remember? It was one for one. It was one for one. Do any of you- It was Michael Hutchinson! Anyway, where was it going with that? Oh yeah! Pontus Holmberg, there's a dude 31 teams around the league. They cannot name that player. Oh, they will know his name, but they don't quite know his name yet. And he said, I will not be the only obscure Swedish player to have an impact on this game. So with the confidence of a vet, he drives to the net and he takes a shot and he's stopped by Biddington. But Yarncroak gets the rebound. There's another disrespected Swede. He's unbelievable. And this, this is how close Biddington came to just ah, scooping it off of the goal line. Look at this, this is like a renaissance painting. There's like four blues going for this thing. But if it crosses the line, it crosses the line, the Leafs are back up. So now we go to the third period with the lead. There's only one goal and it was a controversial one. Blues have the puck in the offensive zone and Jordy Ben is picked. This is a pick. Was it intentional? Ah. I don't know. I don't know if I care, to be honest. But it was a significant enough pick that it allowed the Blues to set up behind the Leafs net, do what they wanted. They work the puck around, Kairou fires it on. Samsonov definitely does not see this thing at all. Robert Thomas doing a good job screening. And it's in the back of the net, tied game 4-4 and Sheldon Keefe decides to turn into a tomato, an actual screaming, wearing a tie tomato. And I have to say, 
He's a petty tomato, but also a correct tomato. Because Wes McCauley is officiating this game. You might remember Wes McCauley as, oh, that whimsical guy with the funny thing where he says fighting? No, he was the guy who officiated game seven against the Lightning and called Justin Hall for the exact same thing. People don't forget and coaches forget even less. So Sheldon Keefe lost his mind and he was correct. Now, even though Sheldon Keefe's righteous indignation uh, made a lot of sense there, can, can I? Can I say something? Okay, I know there was a pick. This is garbage. This is garbage right here from the Leafs. What on earth is this? This is why this game is filed under the hooray folder. The, the Leafs don't really do this. They're better defensively than they have been in like a quarter century at least. Um, but this is garbage. And then, in the dying moments of regulation, about 90 seconds to go in regulation, there's a puck battle in the Leafs corner. Blues attempt to stick lift on Zach Aston Reese. They super duper miss and nail him in the face. Like nail him, drops his stick immediately, takes off his glove even, feels his face. There's blood on his hand because he felt his face because his face is bleeding. Reminder, this was a puck battle. That's where the puck was. What else are you watching if you did not see that puck battle? On the broadcast, they're talking about, oh, they might've thought it was on a follow through. And then they show the replay and they're like, that wasn't on a follow through at all. So the Blues luckily don't score on that play. And they luckily don't score in the final 90 seconds of regulation. And they luckily do not score in overtime because the Leafs get jobbed. Dude, I don't care. Okay, okay let's, let's let the pick go. Let's let the pick go. Let's say the Leafs were just bad and that's an accident and things happened and it's not uncommon that that call gets missed and shut up, play better defense. The, tie, the, the game is tied 4-4. This Aston Reese bleeding all over the play. Like when you're an official and you look over and you see that, where do you think it came from? Like, does that, did that fall out of the air? Are you sitting there? I, what, what, like, what are you sitting there thinking? Are you thinking, uh oh, I think I missed something. Do you automatically go to, ah, it was a follow through. It must've been a follow through. I wouldn't miss something like, I wouldn't miss something that obvious. A lot of people were talking about reviews and until that is put into the rules, like concretely, like carve it in there, like Moses. I don't know what the officials are supposed to do, but can, can I just say, it's the future. It's the future. 2022 is the future. You know what we never used to have? This thing, this this camera right here. We never used to have this technology, YouTube. Never used to have that. Here, let me straighten it out. Let me straighten it out because it's the future. We never used to have this technology. The reviews, reviewing offsides and goalie interference and, and replays. We never used to have any of this technology. It's ridiculous that thousands, hundreds of thousands, ideally millions at home, are watching this game, they see the call be wrong within seconds. Like this isn't an offside review where you're examining pixels and this should be four minutes for the Leafs, for the rest of regulation, and if the Blues are able to kill it off, the beginning of overtime. Wham bam, thank you, sir or madam. They've gotta fix this because it's ridiculous that we know that call is wrong. We know they missed it within seconds of it happening. Literally seconds, within 30 seconds of it happening. That is a perfectly reasonable amount of time. And it just doesn't get called anyway. That's a game altering miss call. It shouldn't have been missed in the first place. But how do we have all these cameras and we can't get the call right? What's the point? What's the point of anything? What's the point of reviewing if it crossed the line or goalie interference or offside if you can't review something you can get right in a matter of seconds? So I'm like a lot of Leaf fans, I'm sitting there like, all right, how do they get screwed in overtime? So the Leafs start camp with two defensemen and I'm like, oh boy, I really hitched my wagon to this. I need you to not lose with the, these three on the ice. And they didn't, smart guy. Then overtime continues and TJ Brody, who is currently on the longest shift of his career, I think, has a breakaway somehow, hauled down, penalty shot. Hey, can I add another rule suggestion? Th this one's more subjective. Um, you should get the option to reject a penalty shot. Hey, Blues fans, or any, any, any fan out there who's not a fan of the Leafs, all right? What would you rather face? Would you rather face a four on three penalty kill in overtime, or would you rather face 
a penalty shot from a defenseman who has one goal? One goal! Looked it up! One goal in 23 games! Every single time I am taking that penalty shot. Every single time. And like, what's the difference? You're giving me the penalty shot because they committed an infraction. Shouldn't I get to pick? Anyway, that, that one's a lot more. We, we don't need to worry about that. But overtime is winding down and as much as I used to dread three on three overtime because the Leafs lost in it a lot, the shootout was approaching. And I don't like the shootout on principle. I don't like the shootout at the All-Star game, let alone in a game that actually counts. And the Leafs say, oh, don't worry about that. We're gonna goof this up. And Matthews is on his stomach and I'm like, oh my gosh. But as the Leafs are sucking wind, as Matthews, who was like double shifted, and Nylander, same deal, were out there, they're sucking wind. And I'm like, they're dying for a line change or a, anything, some sort of reprieve. Ice the thing if you have to. Willie empties the tank! Strips Tarasenko! Fights off Tarasenko! Doing like a Jedi stick flippy thing around the linesman so he doesn't decapitate him. Doing those Super Mario crossovers I love so much! I'm sorry, when he does those, you're not catching him! Forehand? Backhand? Once, once he goes to the backhand, it's over. Puck! Don't! Lie! Least! Win! Willie, you're just, oh, that, can I kiss you through technology? There's a song about that, it kiss me through the phone. It's old, that song's old. So, that's a Soldier Boy song? 2008? November 2008, that came out at the beginning of my second season of LFR, wow. A anyway, uh, questions. Nylander for All-Star, right? Totally deserves it this year. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The dude's on like a 50 goal pace or high 40s. There's no way William Nylander does not go to the All-Star game this year. It's almost January. He's tearing it up. He's the most offensively dynamite Leaf, which is wild. Willie should go to the All-Star game 100%. Blood equals automatic review of play. Thoughts? Hockey players get a lot of like little nicks and cuts and stuff like that, but like, past degrees was boring. And I just feel genuinely, I think officials want to get the call right. Refs want to get the call right, linesmen want to get the call right. Everyone just wants to do their job and do a good one. They want to get the call right. The official should have the option to look at Aston Reese's face and be like, you know what? I think I might have missed something, especially in the last two minutes of the game. I think I might have missed something. Let me go back. And you have a time limit. I'm big on the time limits for these reviews. But what's, what's a minute, 60 seconds? Hmm? You should have the option. Like, Wes McCauley should have the option to make the choice to look at Zach Aston Reese and either say, yeah, that's a lot of blood, I'd like to see how that happened, or that's a lot of blood and I don't particularly care. And then it's definitely his fault in, in more ways than one. You missed it the first time and you didn't care that you missed it. Help me convince other Blues fans that we need to rebuild. Eh, eh, rebuild though? Like tear it down? I don't know about that. Don't get too caught up in the Connor Bedard thing. Like I, I know Blues are, are used to like big swings and changes in the standings, but like, it's almost New Year, it's almost the halfway mark of the season, and the Blues just aren't bad enough. Like, you're not close to bad enough. Look at the bottom of the standings. Chicago? You're not even, no. You're not even in the same conversation. Ironically, I think the Blues are a pretty good team who need stops. They need stops, just like how they were in 2019. They were fine. I didn't think I didn't think they were Stanley Cup caliber, but they were fine heading into the season. I thought they were at very least a playoff team, like a strong contender. They didn't get a save. Then Bennington comes in and he gives them lots of saves, and now he can't give them a save. They need a save. Who was the last Leaf defenseman to take a penalty shot? Glad you asked. So I looked it up. Carl Gunnarsson, hilariously, against Nashville in 2013, he did not score. At least one for nothing though. Not a question, but hope you had a lovely holiday, Steve. That was so nice. Thank you. I did. I did have a lovely holiday and I hope you had a lovely holiday too. For now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Continue to have a happy holidays. It's the time between Christmas and New Year. The days of the week don't matter. The Leafs play Thursday and that's two days from now. That's how you know. It's at nine, by the way.